Hey guys, this goes Comb24 here, bringing you a real quick redstone video. This is the explanation video for this door right here. It is the current smallest 7x7 funnel door on Bedrock Edition. I made a showcase video or cinematic edit like video on this thing not too long ago, about a week ago actually by the time that I'm uploading this. But for those of you who haven't seen it, here it is in action. The closing is pretty slow on the top and I'll be explaining that when I get onto the layout. When I go on over to the back side, you can see it doesn't have a back side, and that's why I'm calling it a funnel door for those of you who are confused. I see on YouTube funnel doors are very often called vault doors, and the difference between funnel and vault is actually very simple. A funnel door is just this design, but single-sided, whereas a vault door is the exact same design, but double-sided. And I know that that difference isn't the biggest, but that is why I'm calling this a funnel door for anyone who was confused. When I go back on over to the front and flick the lever again, you can see it also all opens. The opening is also quite slow, which again I'll be explaining when I get on to the layout explanation. This thing is 13 blocks wide, 4 blocks deep, and 13 blocks tall. So it has a volume of 676 blocks. Again, this is the smallest I've ever been able to make. This has the exact same height and width as my previous design right here. The only difference being a block off of the back side. And you might think that this shave was easy, but it was actually rather challenging. And I guess that's how I will start the explanation. So on to why the layout is the way it is. So, like I said, we're going to be starting the explanation by explaining what's up with the layout and why it's so weird. And there's this thing in slime doors. It does apply to other doors, but it's, at least for me, I most use it when referring to slime doors. Contained versus uncontained. And there's, for slime doors at least, a very, very simple definition. For an uncontained slime door, there is slime on the outer layer of the door that, when moved, will grab onto blocks around it. And so I've set up a little bit of a demo here, and I think that this is actually a pretty good demo. It is the quadruple piston extender layout from this door right here. And the reason I've chosen this is because you might have thought that if I wanted to make this volume shave, I could have just cut this back layer off right here. And here's why I decided to not. This is what it looks like currently in the door. And as you can see, the slime is contained. There's obsidian all around it where it doesn't need to pull the blocks, and therefore the slime won't get messed up or mess up the hallway. The extension still works just fine, as you can see here. Oop. There we go. It's pushed up four blocks, and so does the retraction. There it goes. So that's the contained layout, and it works just fine. And here's the uncontained layout. Now, if I were to have this thing extend as it is right now, it would still work just fine. As you can see, it pushes up four blocks, and the design is just what it needs to be on the front side here. However, let me really quickly retract it. Because this is uncontained, let's say I wanted to extend the hallway back here. Well, I definitely could, but here's the catch. This part of the hallway, starting from this layer and going backwards, isn't part of the door. Therefore, there will be no wiring back here. So if I were to have this thing extend, it would extend just fine. But as you can see, it has pulled up part of the hallway that I've extended. Again, this isn't part of the door's volume, but if you wanted to extend the hallway, it would still be there and it would still get pulled. The retraction also works just fine because this thing can handle having that many extra blocks. But as you can see, this part of the hallway got pulled down. And again, this isn't part of the door. So there will be no flattening pistons. On the front, I have this one flattening piston that handles that block, but there's nothing here to push these back up into place. And so they will just forever remain underneath the door unless you extend the volume out back here. This obsidian is still technically necessary if you want to extend the hallway. So I've always opted for just going with it or making a more complicated layout to avoid the need for it. And that is why the layout is so complicated. So now that you've seen why the layout is the way it is, let's really quickly get into the layout itself. So this right here is the layout, and as you can see, there is a lot going on here. But first thing to notice is it is contained. There is no slime on the outer layer of this door, therefore you can extend this hallway as much as you like, and the hallway won't get messed up by the door. Second thing is that this is also, right here at its core, just a folded triple piston extender. But, as we already know, 7x7 seven seven piston doors need a quadruple because the block is 1, 2, 3, 4 from the ceiling, walls, and floor. So, the folded triple here actually does get in a lot of movement. You can see here it's just now pushed down. 1, 2, 3 blocks. 
And the way that I was able to get in the middle block was by attaching a sticky piston to the back of this triple and just having it be extended. So now, as you can see here, if I really quickly activate that, this has pushed up one, two, three, four blocks from the ceiling and has managed to fill in our middle block. However, because this extra piston is here and it isn't being pulled, this block right here isn't being pulled by slime and is rather being pulled by this piston, that adds a lot of extra difficulty. As you can see right here, this piston has had to be pulsed by an observer with every single movement to ensure that it doesn't leave its block behind. And all these extra blocks require a lot more logic because of the push limit and also the redstone block storage. As you noticed, when this piston was in this position right here, I had to power it separately. And that is what this is for. This is the weird redstone block storage layout that I used. And it's just so that I can power this piston when it gets to that position. So as you can see here, it gets powered by this redstone block storage and it's also able to retract. It just requires a little bit of dense logic. There we go. <laughs> I made it really complicated there, but that's not what the logic looks like in the door. I'll showcase it a little bit later. So the extension is a little bit difficult. First things first is I had this extend so that I could take advantage of these piston heads here. I found it's a lot easier to repulse an observer that at a later time than it is to keep a line activated, especially with this dust right here being necessary for the extension, which I'll explain a little bit later. So I wanted this to be observer activated, and the only way for me to make that reliable was by having these piston heads right here. And so this thing can extend, but the second it pushes down, that slime right there sticks to this block, which then is being blocked by that piston head, so it's forced to leave all the slime behind. and then it's done the first move. Now you might think that the next logical step would be to push in this piston here and then have it push, but as you can see, it has hit the push limit. And it's actually trying to push exactly 13 blocks. So this piston can still extend, but that one can't. And the only way that I was able to think of being able to make this work was by having this piston somehow get left behind. And I actually took advantage of something that you've probably run into yourself. If you've ever tried making the Java Edition Double Piston Extender, you'll probably have seen that it doesn't work at all. This piston gets left behind because that sticky piston isn't able to retract it with only a four tick pulse. This sucks for the Double Piston Extender setup here, but it's very useful for this door because as you can see, it also translates over to slime. It also translates over to slime. And so I was able to use that to get this piston right here to be left behind. I give this a four tick pulse, and as you can see, that piston is left, no longer connected to the slime, allowing this to extend. Then that extends, and obviously the redstone block storage does its thing a little bit later. The retraction is pretty standard. The only area that gave me trouble was the extension because of the push limit. And there it goes. Now this redstone block double piston extender here, or the storage for the redstone block, was a little bit difficult because as you can see here on the sides, the signal is coming up from the sides and this gets powered before the top. So I couldn't have just started, you know, throwing in random pulses like this because that would have resulted in something along the lines of this, hold on. If I just started in throwing random pulse pulses, that would have happened. And then this would not have been able to extend at all. So that's why this redstone line is here. It's a little bit of a weird detail for me to be pointing out, I know, but I was pretty happy um, and proud of thinking of this solution because I thought that this wasn't even possible because of it. So first thing that happens is that extends, then this gets powered, but then this line powers both that piston and that piston at once, keeping that one extended so that the redstone block can get pushed into place. Then for the retraction, deactivate that, and as you can see here, this thing has just been reactivated by that redstone block to pull it back up, pull that out of the way, then give that a short pulse, uh, four ticks, so that that deactivates, and then this can pull it out of the way, deactivate that, and then repulse. And that's the redstone block storage on the side. The top is very, very weird. The logic is very, very <laughs> dense, but I was very, very happy with how I was able to pull it off. This right here is the bulk of the retraction logic right here. Sorry, my Minecraft crashed, but uh, we're back. So what I was saying was, you notice that this has all got a lot of delay. And the reason for that is, on the extension, you actually need it to be slow because of this thing getting repowered. So I'm going to really quickly simulate the extension again. If I have these two things extend too fast, you'll notice that this piston gets left behind. And that's because, as the slime was sliding past, it got powered and extended, but then the slime moved before it retracted. 
And so it was like the slime was trying to pull it as an immovable block, and it couldn't, so it just got left behind. That is why the extension is so slow. But this was also a little bit of an advantage in wiring, because I was actually able to use the slow nature of that bit. I just broke it, but... I was actually able to use the slow nature of that logic there to my advantage for the retraction. As you can see here, when I turn on the door, the extension works just fine. It's just as slow as it needs to be. And then right here on the retraction, you can see that all I needed to do was refire this logic once. And it's able to get in the double piston retraction for me. So that's it for the top. That's all I wanted to showcase. And uh, now that you've seen pretty much the bulk of the difficult logic in the door, let's just get on to the rest of it, starting with the sides. So there isn't actually too much that I wanted to explain for the sides. There's just this new technique that I've been using now for these types of triple piston extenders that I thought was worth pointing out. So obviously, like for the top, I used the piston heads for the first extension here, just to allow me to send in a single pulse. And so as that thing extends, so does this, pressure plate gets powered, powering this, turning off that torch, updating that observer, and pulsing this piston. So that's how the first extension is done. And also that pressure plate is powered, powering that once it's in place. And then also this dust is powering that block because dust only visually redirects into pistons. Um, a good example of that is this right here. Here we go. You can see the piston is getting powered because it's next to the dust, but the dust is acting as though it's turned into the block. So that's how this extension works, and once it's all done, it just looks a little bit like this. Very, very quick on the extension, and also relatively quick on the retraction. The refiring of this thing is handled from that observer there. As you can see, it pulses a piston, updates that observer, pulsing that piston which updates these two observers, powering that again. So that's the sides, and now on to the final bit, the bottom. The bottom was all right in terms of logic. The only issue was the space that it had to fill. So as you can see here, if I just block off the bottom and flick the lever, you can see the, the sides handle a lot, but they also take up a lot of space. There needs to be a triple piston extender pushing a block right here, but there's also blocks here taking up a lot of room. And so my fix for this was just coming up with the layout that I did for the bottom. It uses a similar mechanic to having that extra piston there to push up another block. So as you can see, it's a double piston extender with an extra piston right here to push up for a triple. And this observ uh, not observer, this redstone block here powers the piston when it's in the right position. So as you can see, that's where it is, and it's pushed up one, two, three blocks. So here's the logic. First thing that happens is this thing gets extended, then that powers, and then that powers. And as you can see, the bottom is now just taken up all the space that it needs to fill. The retraction gets a little bit more logic dense, so first things first, we deactivate that, then we deactivate this, and as you can see, it has just repowered this sticky piston, so that's good. We don't need an observer to repulse it to pull down that block, but if we don't deactivate it, you can see here, it gets left behind. And so my fix for this was by was just repulsing this sticky piston right here. As you can see, it deactivates that piston. Then this can retract, that can retract, repulse that, and the flattening is handled separately. So yeah, that's just about all I wanted to show for this door. It's not the most complicated door, but it, I had a little bit of trouble with it, and I was quite happy with the result anyways. Hopefully you got something out of this video, and it was helpful for you. That's just about it. I'm Viscose Comb 24, and I'll see you next time.